Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Here we are. It is time for Tuesdays with Tina, and it, we're getting started with incisive injection tips. So as people come in, we'll get started. And, you know, this is all being recorded as well. So I'm going live and recorded. And the recordings do go up onto YouTube as well. So if you've ever missed a Tuesdays or if you want to see some of the past ones, you can go to the Teacher Tina RDH YouTube site as well. So hello, Facebook friends over here and hello, Instagram fam up there. Like um, for those of you that have been following along today, we're going to be discussing tips for the incisive injection. And uh, I really like this injection, and I have to say it, it came about because of just working with my students, um, my students, my college hygiene students, and also with my anesthesia certification or refresher course students that, you know, we talk about this injection, and you learn it oft, oftentimes on a regular basis, but we don't necessarily use it at, to our fullest capacity of what we can, what we're using it for. So we're gonna talk about that today, which I'm really excited about. And as a reminder, if you've missed anything, you can always go onto the YouTube, uh, Teacher Tina RDH YouTube page to be able to catch some of the other past ones. So the incisive injection, now this is a mandibular injection technique. And I know it seems kind of weird to say that it's the incisive injection and it's a mandibular injection technique because we normally think of the incisive injection as being a maxillary like we think of here incisive we kind of think maxillary incisors right because that's that's what we think about like well at least that's for me and most people that's what they think about is the maxillary incisors but the incisive injection is a mandibular injection that takes care of anesthetizing basically from the premolar to the midline of the mandible. So we've got mis part of Mr. Skull here. And uh, for those of you down here in Facebook, sorry about the lighting. Well, I'm, I'm working on it, trying to figure out. Instagram's got great lighting, so you guys are <laughs> don't have too much of a glare, but I'm, I'm working on it. The, as, oh gosh, some of his teeth broke. I just noticed, oh my gosh, you guys. I am so sad right now. I just noticed Mr. Skull's teeth broke. I've had this skull for over 15 years. I, my heart, my heart is so sad. I'm going to have to start looking to see where his teeth broke off. Okay. Anyway, back to the topic. Oh, I kind of want to cry a little. Okay. Well, you know, uh, the incisive injection would work well for Mr. Skull because, uh, if we had to re restore these, because, uh, those, um, that lateral and central incisor that's missing number 24 and 23 that are missing would uh, definitely <laughs> could benefit from that um and maybe I, I might need dental implants or something so our incisive injection is going to anesthetize uh, the incisive nerve as it travels within the mandible within the mandible now remember at that inc uh, that incisive nerve is that junction is the mental foramen now that mental, the mental foramen is where we have the mental nerve ex exiting out of the mandible and taking care of the, the cheek and the chin of this lower region, but the incisive nerve stays in and, and will take care of the pulp of the, basically the premolars to that midline. So when you're doing this injection, it's perfect for anybody that needs to have perio work done you know, canine to canine. If maybe you've done a mandibular balk on the left side and you wanna just continue, you know, as a nicety for your patient to finish the lower anterior, may you wanna do the incisive on the other side, okay? So you would wanna do that if you're doing some like sort of restorative work where you are concerned about just pulpal anesthesia on that, that first or second premolar. Instead of doing a mandibular block where the whole tongue has to be numb, you can do an incisive injection and uh, it'll just impact their lower lip and the patient won't have a, a numb tongue, which is great. So um, so when you're doing this, make sure you're palpating. Feel for the mental foramen and you can even feel it on yourself. Feel right through there. You can feel for that mental foramen and you want to deposit that anesthetic right over that particular zone. Now, normally when I do this injection, I sit at 12 o'clock from behind my patient at 12 o'clock and, oh, I must not have set a syringe aside in here. So I like to sit at 12 o'clock, so I'm coming up and over the patient. We'll just kind of use this really long. <laughs> Chopsticks, more uses than just for eating. 
<laughs> so um, you just can come right over your patient and and deposit right over that premolar soup. Sorry if I can change the angulation here for I'm gonna get, sorry Instagram people we're just getting close up onto Facebook here so those Facebook people can see. Okay, so you're just gonna come right over, right over there. Just come straight down. Just coming straight down. And I like to deposit that solution right over that frame. And now when you're doing it, be, be forewarned, you're going to see that, that tissue balloon up. Okay, that's very, very common. I like to use Articane with this injection. It's my favorite. That's what I, my, I, my, I'm just an Articane fan. I think Articane needs to be used more. Uh, U.S. needs to catch up with times, but that's a whole different topic. Blah, blah, blah. Incisive. You're going to see the tissue balloon up. Massage that anesthetic into the foramen, and that's how you're going to get your profound pupil anesthesia pushing that anesthetic into that mental foramen so it can completely bathe that incisive nerve as it's traveling within the um, mandibular canal, okay? So that's what you wanna do. You want as, it, as it's traveling through, I'm gonna do a little shadowing here. Sorry, there you go, Facebook friends. So as it's traveling through the mandibular canal, you can uh, get that anesthetic to go through there. Now, a short needle works great. I will say I highly recommend having some stability with this. When I'm doing this injection, like I said, I like to sit behind my patient, and I actually will, I will just like, you know, I hold there like this. Like I actually, I put my thumb right in the vestibule. I'll use the knuckle of my thumb, retract that cheek out, really have my hand underneath their mandible and stabilize that way to keep that nice strong hold. And you get a nice big bowl out where you can see into the vestibule. You can stabilize with your knuckle right on the hub or barrel of the needle of, or of the syringe. That makes it so you're not going in deeper or pulling out either. It's very common when we're aspirating that we pull out a little bit. So just getting that kind of stabilization right there makes it a lot, help, a lot more helpful, okay? All right, so for those of you that are joining, hello, happy to see you. You've, you've missed the traumatic announcement that Mr. Skull, his two front teeth broke off. So I'm really sad he's 15 years old and was in pristine condition. And, and I just noticed that his two front teeth broke off. It's, it's really sad. I, I think I need to get him dental implants. Um, and if you've missed anything and you want to watch it again, you can watch it on Facebook, Instagram, and I also am uploading them onto YouTube to make it a little easier to see some of those past episodes, okay? All right, so as a reminder, premolars to midline of the mandible. You're gonna need to feel for that mental foramen. When you're giving the injection, you're gonna see that tissue balloon up. Push that anesthetic into the mental foramen so it actually bays that incisive nerves. Use a short needle and use, you can use your knuckle for stability. I highly recommend it, okay? All right, you guys, it's been a whirlwind. I Last week, I didn't actually do a live. I did a recorded version and then uploaded it onto YouTube and tried to share it to Facebook and Instagram. And I missed you guys. I really missed doing this live and I missed the uh, quirkiness and the rawness of the whole thing. So uh, sorry, friends, you're just gonna have to deal, put up with me this way. Uh, the timings of it all will vary depending upon what I've got going on. If, I, if it is a day that I'm teaching students or if it's a day that I'm seeing patients and maybe later in the day, or it could be as early as it is right now if it's a day where I get to work from my home office, which slowly but surely is getting all updated. I, this is my new office color, so which I love. All right, I want to leave you all with a quote. Um, this one's from Larry Bird. And, you know, Larry Bird, for those of you that don't know, is uh, a, quite a phenomenal basketball player in his own right from the like, 80s, late 80s, early 90s, I'm pretty sure. it was. He might have been even through the late 90s. Man, I probably should have double-checked that. Anyways, he's a phenomenal basketball player. And I love this quote that he came up with. And it is. it says, a winner is someone who recognizes his God-given talents, works his tail off to develop those talents into skills, and uses those skills to accomplish his goals. And I think, wow, <laughs> it's a good reminder to remember that it takes time, it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes insight. And kind of when you find yourself, especially as you're going through and you're learning something, a new skill, that it does take time and you really do need to uh, focus. It, you have to work your tail off to develop those skills. And then when they're developed, then you can work on it to achieve your goal, whether that is graduating hygiene school or dental school or expanding your practice, expanding your skill set. If it is um, learning how to scuba dive or redoing your office, anything. Like 
it just takes time, it takes effort. And you know, if you are a dental professional and there's something else that eeks, irks inside you, like you're like, oh, I, there's more, you know, lean into that. Look into it and see what it is. Because I will say, if I hadn't have done that for myself, I wouldn't be here today getting to share anesthesia tips with you all. Because at one point in time, I'm like, I think there's still something more. There's more talents in me that are not being utilized. So with that, my friends, uh, have a great rest of your week. I will see you next week. And please uh, go to the Teacher Tina RDH YouTube channel. Check it out. More, more and more videos are being uploaded. I'm loading all these Tuesdays with Tina on there. And I'm doing some of the past archives of that to pull those up and put those in there as well. And I'm thinking about putting some other just little snippets of videos from some of the uh, on-demand CE courses that I have. So thinking about it. Haven't done it yet, but it's in thinking about it. So thank you very much, friends, for being here. And share this with your friends too. All right, let's get to, let's grow. Let's begin. Let's, let's gain more friends. Why not? Okay. All right, guys, have a great uh, night and I'll see you next week.